Okay, this is a second uh, any any induction any induction <laughs> excuse me induction inequality proof. Uh, remember that again we want to focus on the use of these inequality theorems. These are the theorems that actually justify the steps in our inequality proof. This, the problem that I'd like to focus on today is um, prove that that for first of all find a natural number n and not such that n cubed is less than two to the n for all n greater than or equal to n naught. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use uh, GeoGebra. And GeoGebra is a, another free online tool. We did, uh, I've done Desmos in other videos. So let me uh, bring it up. Here it is. And um, there you go. So what I need to do is I need to put in, and the, let's look at it again. It's n cubed and it's less than or equal to. 2 to the n. So uh, what I need to do, just like we like, just like I've done for in other problems, uh, I could graph each individually. But what I'm going to do on GeoGebra is I'm going to graph the difference. So y equals um, n cubed or x cubed rather. So x caret cubed and then minus 2 to the n or 2 raised to the x. Okay, so what Geodra is good at doing is um, allowing you to basically grab these values and scale it. That's something that some other programs don't do a good job of. And it looks like, remember this is the difference, and what we're really looking at is we're trying to find the places where, uh, we're trying to find the places where these values intersect so where this graph is zero. The green graph is the difference between them and it looks like that the graph has some values that sort of switch back and forth goes reaches a maximum oh was that about a little over eight and then I'll move this over and then right about ten a little bit before ten it, it skips to zero and keeps going down so I can I can zoom in with GeoGebra or the, a lot of these other programs, and it looks like right before 10. Right before 10, they're equal. After 10, it's negative. If it's negative, that means the 2 to the x is larger. So I think, and that leads me to a conjecture, my conjecture is, um, hold on, my conjecture is, uh, do I even have it here? <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I I, I looked at the difference. Um, based on GeoGebra, my conjecture is that n cubed is less than or equal to two to the n for all n or to greater than or equal to ten. So my n not is ten, and I did that by just looking at the graphing package. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to prove this using induction. And again, this is an example of the extended principle of math induction because the starting point is 10 rather the base case is s of 10 rather than s of 1. So the first step remember um, is showing s of 10 is true for step in induction and we do that by substituting 10 into each side. If n equals 10 then n cubed equals let me get my pen up there you go n cubed equals 10 to the n equals 1,000, plugging 10 into the left-hand side. If n equals 10, then 2 to the n equals 2 to the 10 equals 1,024. So, two, so n cubed is less than or equal to 2 to the n for n equals 10, which means s of 10 is true. Now comes the fun part. At least I think it's the fun part. And that is the inductive step. Okay, we've got to show that um, we, and since we've already shown the base case, we've shown that s of 10 is true. We're showing that if s of t s, if s of k, then s of k plus 1 is true for k being greater or equal to 10. So what we want to assume, we want to assume that s of k is true. Right there. Because it's a, uh, essentially a conditional statement we're trying to prove. Assume s of k is true, which means we're going to assume that k cubed is less than or equal to 2 to the k for k being greater than or equal to 10. This k greater than or equal to 10, as you'll see in a bit, is important. 
Um, by, you know, always, as we've done before with induction proofs, I like to sort of have the goal in mind. We want to prove that S of K plus 1 is true, which would be that K plus 1 cubed is less than or equal to 2 to the K plus 1. And what's helpful as well is, as you'll find in this, is expand it out a bit. K plus 1 cubed is, using a little algebra, is K cubed plus 3K squared plus 3k plus 1. So if we can get to here, we can get to here, which means we can get to here. All right, that's kind of the general strategy. So what we're going to do, we want to say, well, we've got that k cubed is less than or equal to 2 to the k. I want to try to make one side correct. Well, notice here I've got a 2 to the k plus 1. So the way I could do that is multiply both sides by 2. By inequality 3, by inequality theorem 3, rather, this is true since the 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now we have the left-hand side, or the right-hand side, rather, is correct. And we've got 2k cubed on the left-hand side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up. And you should be getting sort of starting to I sort of understand the strategy now. Notice my left-hand side, 2 to the k plus 1, is correct. I'm going to start pulling out the pieces I need on the right hand side. I need a k cubed. Well I've got 2k cubed so I'm going to pull out one of these k cubes. So 2k cubed is k cubed plus k cubed. And now this is the piece, this is the piece where the 10 comes in. I'm going to use the fact about what I know about 10, k. k is greater or equal to 10 which means that 10 is less than or equal to k. And the only reason I do that is because all of our inequality theorems are expressed in terms of less than. So 10 is less than or equal to k. So what that means, if I multiply both sides by k squared, and k squared is, is positive, um, that 10k squared is less than or equal to k times k squared, which is k cubed. All right, And that would be right there. Again, that would be theorem 3, inequality theorem 3. So now, by inequality theorem 7, and inequality theorem 7, remember, says if you plug, if you plug, <laughs> so, uh, substitute, I'll use a better word, if you substitute something smaller into, into this expression, if I substitute something smaller than k cubed, the expression would still be true. This is the part that algebra students struggle with a bit because it, you're really not doing it algebraically. You're sort of recognizing relationships. So instead of k cubed, I'm going to put something smaller in there, 10k squared. And that is where, where theorem, uh, inequality theorem 7 comes in. I substituted 10k cubed. I substitute 10k cubed right there for k cubed because 10k cubed is less. Now, I've got my 10k, or 10k squared, excuse me. I've got my 10k squared, but keeping in mind the goal, I only need 3k squared. So 10k squared is 3k squared plus 7k squared. I don't know if this is actually the term for this, but I call this a telescoping proof because we're going to kind of keep pulling out and getting the pieces we need, pulling out this expression. Now let's look at the 7k cubed and, again, use the fact about what we know about k. We know that k is less, or 10 is less than or equal to k. So I know that if I basically multiply, um, I have 7k squared. How would I get that from my, how would I get that from my 10 is less than k, 10 is less than k, uh, less than or equal to k? Um, I would uh, multiply both sides by, um, what is it, 7k. So if I multiply both sides by 7k, um, and again, I know 7k is positive, because k is positive, um, then I'd have 70k, which is equal to 7 times 10 to the k, is less than or equal to 7k squared. In other words, I looked at the k squared. I used the fact that k... 10 is less than or equal to k. Basically, that's what I'm doing. But again, I'm using theorem 7. I know that 70k is less than 7k squared, so I can substitute 70k in for my 7k squared. And that's what I get right here.
That is what Theorem 7 says. Doing a little algebra, I have my 70k in this expression, but I only need three of them. So let's pull that 3 out. So that would say that k cubed uh, plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 67k. Now let's use the fact about what we know about k one more time. 10 is less than k. Essentially what you're doing is wherever you see a k in this expression, you're substituting in a 10. That's essentially that's essentially the, the product. That, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the action. Um, I know that 10 is less than k, so I can substitute it in here. Um, and again, this is true by inequality theorem 3. So again, by inequality theorem 7, I know that 670 is less than 67k. So wherever I saw see a 67k in here, I can substitute 670. The last piece, so we have k cubed. We've got our 3k squared. I've got our 3k. We need a plus 1. So out of the 670, I'm going to divide that up into two pieces, 1 and 669. In other words, I break up the 670. So I've essentially telescoped this. I've kept pulling it apart until I had the pieces I want plus something 670. Okay, 669 rather. Now we're two steps away. We're going to use another one of the inequality theorems. And it's inequality theorem 2. Um, which says that, remember that one says that, which is one of the most important ones we'll have in this class, that if a plus b is less than or equal to c, and these are all positive, then that says that a is less than or equal to c, and b is less than or equal to c. In other words, I can just drop, think of that as my b, this is my a, because each piece is less than or equal to 2 to the k plus 1, or because the sum, rather, is less than or equal to 2 to the k plus 1, and each is positive, that would imply by theorem uh, 2 that k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1, which is our equal to our k plus 1 cubed, remember we did the algebra, is less than or equal to 2 to the k. That states that s of k plus 1 is true, and so we reach our conclusion. Since s of 10 is true, and s of k implies s of k plus 1 is true for k is greater than or equal to 10. That implies that n cubed is less than or equal to 2 to the n for all n greater than or equal to 10.